Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus y over 2 equals f of x plus f of y divided by 2. And we're going to be solving for f of x. Now these functions, I think, are... These functional equations are called Janssen's functional equations. Correct me if I'm wrong. And let's go ahead and solve it. We're going to be using substitution. We're also going to be using the, uh, the fact about odd and even functions. So we're going to be doing some, you know, fun stuff, algebraic manipulations. Let's get started. So, you know, with these kinds of functions, a lot of times we uh, do substitution. We replace x with 0, y with 0. Sometimes we leave one of the variables as free, so on and so forth. I'm going to replace x with z plus w and y with z minus w. This is a very common technique, especially if you're dealing with averages, if you're dealing with trigonometric functions, you know, sum to product, product to sum formulas are all obtained this way. So from here, x plus y over 2 becomes z plus w plus z minus w divided by 2. And w cancels out and we end up with z. That means x plus y over 2 is equal to z, which is good. Now we get f of z. And on the right hand side, we get f of z plus w plus f of z minus w. And all of that is divided by 2. Obviously, we can go ahead and, you know, divide, uh, not divide, what is the word? Multiply, okay. We can go to multiply both sides by 2, which is cross multiplication. And that gives us f of z plus w plus f of z minus w equals 2f of z. Great. So that is a very important equation, but I would like to manipulate it more to get what I need. So here's what I'm going to do. Suppose, suppose f of 0 is equal to k. I'm going to subtract k from both sides, but I'm going to subtract it twice. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this as f of z plus w minus k and then f of z minus w minus k. So I subtracted k twice. That means I'm going to subtract 2k from the right hand side. And I'm going to be defining a different function now. So I'm going to write it as 2 times f of z minus k. And I'm going to call that g of z. So g is defined as f of z minus k where k is equal to f of 0. Awesome. So that's going to be my new function g. Now, with that definition, notice that uh, the expressions on the left-hand side become g of z plus w and g of z minus w. That's the beauty of the substitution. And the right-hand side is just going to be 2 times g of z. So we kind of got a similar expression to what we have here. It's kind of like something similar to this, but with g. And g is super duper important because g of 0 is... Let's go ahead and find out what it is. Okay, great. So from here, g of 0 becomes f of 0 minus k. But what is k? k is f of 0. Yay! So if f of 0 is k, then k minus k is equal to 0. This just implies that g of 0 is 0. That's why we define g, actually. We need a function that gives us 0 at 0. Okay, that's the reasoning for uh, this substitution. I hope that makes sense. Okay, great. So now we, got, uh, we established that g of 0 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and write our equation. Uh, use our equation here, and we're going to manipulate this a little bit. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, do the following. I'm going to interchange z and w. So that's going to give me the following. Interchange z and w. And that gives us the following. g of w plus z plus g of w minus z, right? And uh, let's see, g of w minus z. And on the right-hand side, I'm getting 2 times g of w. Awesome. And if you write our original equation, g of z plus w. By the way, we, that's the same thing as g of w plus z. It doesn't really matter. They're the same thing. But this time, I'm going to get g of z minus w equals 
g of z. So I kind of got like a system of equations. But here's the thing. We have a lot of unknowns. First of all, if you just focus on the left-hand side, I have g of w plus c, g of w minus c, and g of z minus w. So that's, th that's three unknowns. And I don't want to deal with three unknowns. So we're going to use the fact that g of 0 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and use that. Since we know that g of 0 is equal to 0, and we have this equation, z, g of z plus w, by the way, I'm using the second one, which was the original equation, by the way, z minus w is equal to 2gz, and I'm going to replace z with 0. Let's go ahead and do that, see what happens. If you replace z with 0, you get g of w plus g of negative w equals 2 times g of 0, but g of 0 is equal to 0, remember that? So this is going to equal 0. Now, this is powerful because if you isolate g of negative w, you get negative g of w from here, if you put this on the right-hand side. And now this gives us a very important fact, the fact that g is an odd function. So g is odd, and that shouldn't be odd, right? g is odd, so now we can go back to our system and rewrite it. So we had g of, uh, let's see which one I wrote first, g of w plus z plus g of w minus z is equal to 2g of w. This was the equation that I derived by switching w and z. And in the second equation, since g is odd, I want to write g of z minus w as the opposite of g of w minus z. So now using the properties of odd functions, this expression right here can be written as negative g of w minus z. Therefore, it's going to be subtraction minus g of w minus z. And the right hand side obviously is not going to change. Now, when you add these two equations, these terms are going to cancel out. Remember, we had three unknowns. Now we have two unknowns and one of them just totally cancel out and we end up with one unknown. So this gives us 2g of w plus z equals 2 times the quantity gw plus gz. Okay, great. Now we can go ahead and cross out the um, 2 as well. Now that leaves us with something super duper nice and that is called Cauchy's functional equation, right? Awesome. Now g satisfies a certain criteria and we can safely say that from here g must be a linear function. So g is linear and you can write g as basically gz as mz plus b, but notice that we have g0 is equal to 0. So from here is b is basically 0 and g of z can be written as m times z. Obviously that's the function that satisfies this equation, right? Great. So we got, z, we got the value of g, but we do need f. We're solving for f, remember? But if g of z is mz, and we know that g of z, let's go back and we're going to back substitute. What's the relationship between g and f? We know that g of z is equal to f of z minus k. So let's go ahead and set this equal to f of z minus k. And if you isolate f of z from here, you're going to get mz plus k. We're almost done. We were looking for f of x, remember? So let's go ahead and replace z with x everywhere. And this can be done because z is just a dummy variable, right? Just just dummy. So we can write f of x as mx plus k, which is basically a linear function as well. But this time k does not have to be 0. But remember, f of 0 is the same as k. So if you replace x with 0, you get f of 0 equals k, which is something we already know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.